Hi, Scott Whitley here. Hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to teach you five ways you can make practicing your bass more fun. Roll that intro. Lots of practice is undoubtedly key to becoming more proficient on your instrument. There is absolutely no doubt about that. The secret is to keep your practice sessions fun, fresh, challenging and interesting. So in this video, I'm going to share five ways you can do just that. If we haven't met before, I regularly make free bass related content here on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon down below so you get notified when I make a new video. Without further ado, let's get into five ways you can make your practice more fun. Number one, treat it like a game. What does that mean? Well, what I mean is, instead of seeing uh, your practice session as, as, as this kind of mammoth task, you know, instead of it being a big pile of work that you've got to get through to get to the next stage, as it were, see it as a fun challenge, you know, in the same way as if you were playing a video game, you'd work really hard, you're going to like lose a life loads of times, the game's going to be over a bunch of times before you finally find out a way to get to like that next level, for example. And that's the thing you've got to do with practicing the bass. So, for example, set yourself little challenges like if you're working on a particular arpeggio, playing it over two octaves or something to a drum machine or a metronome, then make regular notes of your progress, okay? So if you don't do that, you, you're kind of like really missing out on, on a, a lot of self-motivation. So if you write down, um, you know, if you're playing a particular scale and on a Monday, you, um, on a Monday, on Monday, <laughs> you, um, you know, you reach like 110 BPM, then write that down. And then the next time you come to practice, the challenge is to try and build up and smash that tempo you know even if it's by a tiny amount like one bpm it's still progress in the right direction okay so that's an example of a challenge another challenge might be that you might be trying to commit a baseline to memory if you watched many of my videos you'll know already that i don't use notation or even tab or anything like that very much um i'm very much about committing things to memory it's the way i play and hence that's the way i teach so, for example, you might be trying to learn um, a bass line or commit it to memory. So the challenge here could be, and again, you've got to document this, um, is to each day learn a bit more, right? Um, so it might be that you, you've, you've learned the intro and then on the Tuesday and the Wednesday, you learn the verse and then the chorus. It might even be that you, if it's something really tricky, you just learn another bar. But the key is you've got to keep a record of where you're at. Uh, and that's the, the way you're going to feel better because if you don't do that you might kind of leave something for a week and come back to it and practice it and then think I thought I'd done this already you know you don't know where you are but if you chart things out even if you just notes on a notepad or you could even you know get really fancy I've never done this uh, and put things into a spreadsheet or something um, you could even get projections how good you're going to be in like 10 years that would be amazing um but if you, if you do this, if you kind of make notes of where you are, you can see the progress and that will kind of reward you. You know, that's like getting the next level in a game. So there, there are a couple of ways you can, you can challenge yourself. Also, be playful with your approach to practicing, okay? So don't be completely rigid. I'll give you an example. If, you're, if you've got your drum machine on, you know, and you're playing, uh, I don't know, like just... Okay. 
okay and and you're kind of like oh i've done it like all up and down the neck you know I, that's something i do i'll i'll do it in every position and then and then back and you just like you just you've done it for like 10 minutes at different tempos and you're like ah oh, i'm losing the will to live here and then just leave the drum machine playing and just do something else or half time it or something or uh you know um, You know, so you're using the same scale, um, but you're just kind of giving yourself a little break and having a little bit of fun. And then after a few minutes of just messing around with it, go back to the kind of, you know, the graft um, of trying to build it up. And um, nine times out of ten, just after that little break from it, but still sticking with the feel, you make progress. And be determined and focused right from the start of your practice session, even before you pick the bass up. Be like, right, today I'm going to nail that bass part or I'm going to learn the chorus of that song I'm learning. You know, just, just be really, really focused from the word go. And don't let yourself kind of just drift off. Now, I'm saying all this and, you know, it's, it's enjoyable to just sit and play and you've got to do that. But the thing here is, the more that you work on things that you can't already do, then like a year from now, you're going to look back and you're going to think, flipping it, you know, the progress I made here. And the flip side of that is, and I've been guilty of this all my life, you know, we all have to a degree, is you don't do that. You don't put that extra hour in a week or half hour a day, or whatever it is you can afford to put in. And then you look back and you think, ah, you know, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I, why didn't I just put... 15 minutes a day in or whatever it was okay so be really really focused right from the get-go when you, you get into your practice session and just one more idea while we're talking about treating practice like a game music is not a competition at all but you can make the process of getting better on the instrument competitive so if you've got a friend online for example it might be someone that you've met in one of the online chats uh, in one of my q and a's or it might just be someone that you've uh, you follow or whatever but if you've got somebody that's kind of a, a you know, kind of like a similar playing level ability and, 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 and similar place in their career to you are, you could like set up a little challenge like, right, see who can learn to play this tune by the end of the week or see who can get, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, the, the highest uh, BPM on this particular, you know, scale playing it 16th notes, whatever. Uh, it's just for fun. Don't, you know, you don't want to get too hung up about that sort of thing. But just putting that little bit of pressure on there can just push you that little bit further than maybe you would have done without that pressure. Number two, switch up your technique. Nine times out of ten, right, you're working on um, something, if it's like a kind of theory thing or, you know, a scale or an arpeggio, you're going to be using your kind of like bog standard, you know, this kind of technique um, or, you, or you plectrum up and down, whatever you, you kind of, what's the word, go-to technique is, you know? So you might be playing like a... I'm not going to play through all that, but you get the idea. Just doing it the kind of regular way. Switch it up, right? If it's kind of getting a bit stale, you're like, oh, whatever. You can get something extra out of this exercise or arpeggio that you, you're working on in this. I kind of tend to work in weak blocks, by the way. I'll work on one uh, thing for maybe a week and then switch it up and, and put something else in for another week. These kind of arpeggios and scales and stuff are great for, for warm-ups, but um, not going to get into actual you know, practice regimes right now. This is just uh, inspiration. So yeah, um, what you could do is instead of just using your fingers like that, you could try, if you don't use a plectrum, you could try using a plectrum. So you kind of like doing something fresh and new and challenging. And um, the knock-on benefits of doing that are, are huge. You're going to improve at a technique perhaps that you don't normally use. Like I say, if you don't normally use a plectrum, use one. It's going to add more vocabulary to your muscle memory. Uh, so in other words, give you more moves that your hands are used to doing. And it's just going to kind of take your focus to another place while still working on the same thing. If you don't want to stray too far or you've just got no interest at all in learning any other kind of techniques, then you can do something as simple as instead of if you normally lead with the first finger, so one, two, three, four, and you start with this finger, one, two, one, two, you could switch that up and start with this finger, one, two, one, two too all right if you've never done it before it really can be quite tricky and, and uh, it's again it's just going to throw um a new challenge in there and kind of like take away from the monotony if, if it's getting that way 
a little bit, but bring something really, really useful to the table. Now, if you do want to learn new techniques, uh, the sky is the limit with what you could do, right? You could you could think, right, well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to learn a bit of slap, so I'll slap it. You know, you could just be like... You know, you could pull it like a, a, a pop, you know. You could alternate, slap and pull, you know. You could uh, do a slap and a pull on each note. You could do that wooten thing, you know, you could do the, the sort of open hammer pluck, you know. Uh, you know, anything like that at all, you know. Uh, you could pull, then slap. I'm not going to go on the, any combination. Just, just have fun with it. Like, that's the key word, fun. You could try just hammering on notes. That's kind of tricky, you know, so not use the right hand at all. And so on. You could try hammering on without open strings, you know, where you kind of like... You know, that sort of stuff. Like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you could just throw in there for a minute and keep it fun and challenging. And just one more suggestion while we're on the, the, uh, the subject of technique and switching up the technique is you could practice playing at sort of extreme velocities a bit more. So maybe you always kind of play like in the middle generally, you know, you always play at this sort of level. You could practice, you know, playing really, really softly, you know. And just seeing how that sounds again, getting used to it, but you know, that becoming part of your muscle memory. Um, and then maybe dig it in a lot more than you, you might. You know, just, just adding stuff uh, that you wouldn't normally use, you know? So essentially adding tools to your dynamics vocabulary. Number three, use drum rhythms or backing tracks. This one is huge as far as I'm concerned. And if you're not doing this or haven't done this, you don't know what you're missing out on. The bass guitar is unusual in that on its own, it doesn't always sound that great. Not to my ears anyway. Um, and certainly, you know, I set my instruments up in a way that work great in a, an ensemble or band context. And, um, you know, like I've got quite a low action and, you know, you'll get bits of buzz. <laughs> And stuff like that and on its own it can sound kind of like if you're just practicing with no accompaniment at all um it can almost start to great can that stuff now there is value in that all by itself because you learn when you are practicing on your own to be able to play lighter um and and, and work around this stuff and i always try and practice when i am doing that thing when i'm not playing with um with any accompaniment to, to get things sounding as clean as possible. So working with a rhythm or a backing track, so it could be a drum machine, it could be that you jump on YouTube and type in drum rhythm or drum accompaniment or drum track or something like that, or even bass backing track, but of course then you, you're stuck with whatever the chords are that um, the uh, the backing track is using. But certainly um, if, you, if you use one of those kind of methods, you're gonna feel more like you're making music. It makes the, the tone of the bass make more sense you have a time reference to bounce off of you can experiment with pulling and pushing the time which you can't really do when there's no reference there and like i say it's just gonna feel like you're making music you know you, you everything you play makes so much more sense in case you're interested the unit i personally use in my practice sessions and in the lessons is the zoom b1on uh, unfortunately it's been discontinued i believe but there are some still available. So I'll try and find a link and put it in the description below. Uh, soon, I'm gonna start using this guy, which is the Zoom B1X4. Uh, and this has kind of like superseded the old B1 uh, units. And um, by all accounts, he's actually a lot better. So look out for an unboxing video of this guy soon. Number four, use effects. This is a really, really simple way that you can inspire yourself to keep on practicing. If you've got a little board, um, throwing on some effects 
can be really, really inspiring. Often one of the problems with practicing a lot is that you kind of, it's like you get sick of hearing your own voice, you know? So for example, when you buy a brand new instrument, there's this kind of like honeymoon period and the, the instrument can do no wrong, you know? Everything you do on it sounds new and fresh, even stuff you've played before, right? But when you're just using the same instrument, I mean, I just use SWB1s pretty much all the time. Sometimes, like I say, it's like you, you kind of get sick of the sound of your own voice. It just sounds like you all the time. And the more that happens, the more you just kind of hear the flaws in everything you're doing. And, uh, and it can become a little bit dis concerning and, and, and puts you off you know so just throwing some effects on for a while gives you a brand new voice instantly you sound like somebody else it sounds like you've got a different bass you know uh, and it's really really inspiring i certainly find it extremely inspiring playing around with effects can be so much fun that it can actually inspire you to write bass parts that you maybe wouldn't have written without having that effect on let me just give you a few examples so reverb for example just good old reverb right um, I've just put on um, a plate reverb, quite a big one, and it's stereo. And um, and just listen to this. This is with. Let me just turn it off. Right. This is without it. Right. Sounds okay. Sounds you know quite happy with that. <laughs> put it put it on and listen to this. So straight away, you could probably um, you could probably sense the way that I, I, I started to play differently. You know, I was playing to that reverb. It made me want to kind of use dynamics. You know, like you know, really soft. And you can also kind of let notes kind of hang. You know, it's like a really, really beautiful sound. Now, um, that doesn't, for me, inspire me to want to play things really, really fast. So, for example, if I was messing around with, um, you know, like... Um, in fact, let, I'm just going to go with this, actually. This is throwing me a bit of a curveball. So, if I've been practicing a load of scales and stuff and I threw that on, it would will make me kind of want to, for a minute, turn the drum machine off, actually. This is a funny one. Like I say, a curveball. Because it makes... It gives you so much back when you play an old. And it makes you want to try atmospheric stuff. So, all right, all right I was using a few bits and bobs that um, I've put together over the years, I guess. But um, that was just improvising. But the thing is, you can... It just... Whatever you do kind of sounds all right. If I just play one note, like, just badly, you know. It sounds amazing. You know, turn that off. And it's not really giving you a lot back. So, all I'm saying is, it can inspire you because it sounds so great. Um, that you can inspire to do so. Another thing I should just point out, you know, I mentioned the B1. Um, I, I've got my in-ears in, in, so I'm listening to everything I play through my headphones, right? Or my earphones. And it sounds, let me tell you that, in stereo, you can just plug your earphones into the back of one of these kind of uh, effects units. And it sounds absolutely amazing. And there's a line in on the back, so you, if you wanted to practice with um, a recording... A, um, you know, you can you can plug your like your iPhone or your Android phone or whatever into there. So yeah, just just an, another little tip for for practicing. You can practice at two in the morning, and all anybody will hear is this. Not very loud at all. Delays are also great fun. Um, different to reverb because it's giving you an act actual repeat rather than the kind of simulated uh, room. 
Uh, so here's one I've just put on. It's called Filter Delay. Uh, I'm just on the default settings here in the Zoom B1 or N. Let's play a note, see what happens. And the thing is, with with the delay, I mean, I can just play like n ignoring the timing of that. Um, let me let me see. And it kind of all gets a bit, you know, a bit muddy. But if you're playing time with it, if you just kind of hit it and and use that almost like a count. One, two, three, four. I mean, it's just so much fun. You know, if I didn't have that effect on... You know, it just isn't giving you anything back to mention. You know, especially, like I said before, if you're really, really used to your instrument and you use it a lot, it's just a fun way to, to be inspired. Now, if you were playing um, scales and stuff, let's give it a go. That might be a bit much, but um, if you were playing, like, the major scale, let me get that tempo again. Alright, so it's, it is a bit much, is that? Because what's happening is, uh, I play a note, and it repeats a bum, bum. And, and I'm playing that note when it repeats that one. So um, you could, let me think, let it repeat once and then play the next note of the major scale. But another fun thing you can do, what, what will work uh, is arpeggios, you know. Right, and the reason they work is an arpeggio, it are, you know, is basically it's the notes that make up a chord. So um, even if you know the repeat is playing that note, the root, while you play the third, you know, they work together. And the minor one, wait till it fades away. Three, four. Alright, so that can inspire you to really, really play around, um, even if it's only slowly. You know, just a little game you can play there is to just find notes in, say, an E minor arpeggio all over the neck, just trying, you know, minor seven. You know, just find... It's just another game, you know? All right, moving on. Filters are so much fun, you know, like wars and auto wars and that kind of stuff because they uh, basically affect the attack, you know, how quickly the note comes in and the decay um, of the instrument. You get some really mad sounds. So this one's called Bass Auto War. It's one of the built-in effects in the B1-O-N. Sounds like this. Really, really cool. So again, if you were playing like, you know, a major scale or something like that. Uh... Just inspires you to do different stuff or try different stuff, that is. These are all built into the B1ON. This is one called M Filter. Check it out. You know, it just sounds so different. Again, if you're just playing arpeggios, that's straight away. That was an interesting thing. It made me want to sort of have a go at, um, playing with dynamics because the harder you play, 
the more of that kind of wah thing you get. Check it out. If I play really light, it's, you know, wah. and if I play hard, you get the full thing open up. So playing really lightly. Or I could get certain notes to pop out, you know. You know, just giving you like little games, little bits of ins inspiration uh, to play around with. This one's a kind of sequence filter, um, like a step thing. So you play one note and hold it, and it kind of does that. You know, um, j again, fun inspiration. Just a couple more examples. Chorus. You know, it just makes everything sound so nice. Finally, distortion or fill, fuzz. This is called bass full smile in the B10N, and uh, it sounds like this. Here we go. So. It's really, really interesting playing with distortion. If you've not done it before, um, it does come with its own challenges because it's very kind of like, it's very forgiving in some ways, uh, but the slightest move you make, check it out, and, and, and it's going to pick it up. You know, if you, you know, I'm just touching the strings and it's picking every single thing up. So it's. Uh, <laughs> And it gives you like almost like infinite sustain compared to when you don't. If I don't, if I switch it off and just play a note, actually that's not bad. But if I put it on, you know, you don't get that kind of decay at all. So again, you know, it can just be fun. Like you, like say you've been sat there going like. Um, uh, You know, you've just kind of like had enough of that for the day. Uh, then if you put a bit of this on. Uh, absolutely nuts but again i mean it, it might just be a case of like you've got like really sick of it and you get a bit of aggression out with that mad sound you know but again really inspires and finally number five do everything backwards one of the things you might use to say to warm up is you might play the major scale ascending you know maybe using every note that's available in that area and then you might move that up a semitone uh, you know, and then go all the way, this is what I do, like an octave, and then come all the way back down, that kind of thing. Well, just do it the other way around, you know, just start at the octave, work all the way down, and work all the way back up. And it's a tiny, tiny little shift in the way you're doing things, but it just makes it new. It makes, oh, I've not done this before, and it just feels new, and it's mentally just slightly challenging. Also, I tend to play things ascending, you know, uh, like... You know, and then come back down. Just switch that up, you know, start descending. And then go up. So it's not a huge step, but it's just something to keep it a little bit more interesting. If you're practicing a slap pattern, you normally sort of start with the thumb. I mean, this gets like a bit more complicated. Just to give an easy example, easy-ish, you might be practicing th uh, thumb and, and finger like over an octave, like slap, pull, you know. You know, try switching that up. That's gonna be actually quite hard. I'm a bit scared about this. So pull, slap, pull, yeah, pull. 
that's hard. See, I've not done it. So that's really, really hard, and it's not probably the most ideal way to play that line. But if you can nail that, then, you know, playing it the regular way around is going to be super easy. These are just a few examples I've come up with of ways you can make your playing more interesting. Be creative, and if these ideas start to become stale, then try and think of new ones yourself. There really are no rules. If it sounds good, it is good. Putting good practice time in is a little bit like saving up. You know, if you save just one pound every single day for a year, then you've got over a third of a grand there, you know? Uh, and it's so easy to like not save that one pound a day, not even think about it too much. But like I say, if you do it, then there's a really substantial amount of money at the end of the year. And it's like that with practice. If you put a little bit of practice in every day or every, every week, as much as you can, but just don't fritter that time away, then like I say, in a year's time, you're gonna be a better player, you're gonna look back, you're gonna be able to see because you, you, you wrote down your progress, how much progress you've made. Um, and just feel better about the whole journey. And of course, the flip side of that is if you don't do that, and I've had periods like this so many times in my life where I look back and I think, do you know what? Why didn't I just practice a bit more each day this year? Um, you know, and you can't get that time back, you know, um, not to get too deep, but life's not a rehearsal. And uh, I think current times are kind of, you know, uh, telling us that in a big way. So, um, so just like I say, just keep it fun. Keep it focused. If you've got ideas uh, that you'd like to share with everybody in the comments below, that um, your ideas to keep things interesting, then please do that as well. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.